hi, my name is Diane Little. Um, we're here in West Fermanagh and uh, I help and support um, community organisations on health related issues and I've been involved um, over the last 10 years on um, in particular in regard to petroleum licensing which um, is, is, it translates in, for this particular area into a, a fracking industry which would uh, cover this particular area with uh, lots of concrete pads, 24-7 um, drilling, noise, light and just transforming this into a toxic industrial wasteland um, really sacrificing everything in the area um, and we currently have a lot of concerns about what's happening in particular with the climate bill. We have an emergency at the moment um, because um, at the start of September the MLAs um, are going to meet again and they're going to consider the evidence that's been submitted to the climate bill and um, when they had the recent consultation. That evidence um, is very important because we submitted the evidence to um, show what methane um, from an oil and gas industry actually means in terms of climate change. It is just ridiculous. It's like having a sieve, you know, to, the suggestion of having a climate bill without a ban on petroleum licensing to be included in that bill. It doesn't make any sense. You can't have a government department um, putting forward a climate bill without a ban on petroleum licensing and at the same time the Department of Economy um, setting up for an oil and gas industry um, to establish here for onshore oil and gas industry in Northern Ireland. That just makes absolutely no sense and it's really urgent that we do not miss an opportunity now to get the pressure onto the MLAs to get that ban on petroleum licensing into that climate bill and that um, is urgent now because that's going to be, they're going to be working on that um, come September. The, the, fracking in, the fracking industry, if you like, um, have a hundred different ways of, of, of terming things and they can, they can get round loopholes. Like in England, they're going ahead with acid fracking. You know, they can call it high volume fracking, low volume fracking. They can say it's not fracking at all, it's something else. So you can get lost in the terminology. Um, you know, and with regard to oil and gas, you know, it's, it's very fundamental. It's, it's the biggest contributor um, to this industry is the biggest contributor of methane which is the worst offender it's 80 times worse than co2 and in northern ireland has a commitment um, to reduce um, you know the greenhouse gases by 82 percent so you're putting the the farming industry into the same carbon budget as an oil as a new onshore oil and gas industry um, and that's going to hurt the most vulnerable community trying to eke a living um, from the land which is their, their, their livelihoods through generations and putting them against um, wealthy people in the oil and gas industry who really are you know there for personal you know making making massive profits from exploiting um, the landscape the war the clean air and the water that that, that we live in here so uh, petroleum licensing um, is, a, is a blanket term um, and we a ban on petroleum licensing is, is what we urgently need um, here to, to stop all of that and that has got to go into the climate bill now. The Department of Econ Economy commissioned research into the economic benefits of an onshore uh, petroleum industry um, in Northern Ireland which, it, it, which tr translates into a fracking industry in Northern Ireland um, whatever way you do it and, and that research was done um, over the all through commissioned and started at the start of Covid and ran all through that and we actually uh, submitted all the evidence into that but they now when with that report and that research is finished they won't release it they're refusing despite our requests of FOIs and everything to actually re re release that report which is which is ridiculous because it's 75,000 pounds worth of taxpayers money and they're using that evidence that, that the Hatch report who are you know um, synonymous with the oil and gas industry um, that that report is going to be used to form policy on petroleum licensing systems um, I don't believe there's even an option for do nothing or licensing you know an option like a, a no a no ban and a ban on licensing within that so that's going to inform policy systems in Northern Ireland um, and we can't even get hold of that research they're refusing to actually give it to us.
Food and Water Watch Europe produced a report um, that's, that's absolutely excellent reading and it says about how the fossil fuel industry which are the biggest contributors to climate change they're greenwashing their product now they're trying to say that gas produced you know uh, you know take it taken from the ground uh, fossil gas can be can be a solution for for the future um, hydrogen needs to come from renewable e renewable energy sources they're trying to say, well, you know, we can we can make it from gas. We can get frac gas, and we can we can we can contribute hydrogen from that. Um, th we just can't have that. It's got to be very simple. You keep it in the ground. If we want to stop climate change, we've got to have a ban on petroleum licensing in Northern Ireland. Um, across Europe, they're spending over 50 million by the oil and gas industry. Over 50 million has been spent lobbying. Um, you know, in governments, you know, and, and in the EU for, you know, this fossil fuel gas um, and this network, this gas pipeline network, um, which, which is really, you know, irrelevant if we really want to stop climate change. And we're currently um, looking at what's happening in Enniskillen at the moment. They're about to start to drill right under the lakes, right across from the east of Fermanagh, across into West Fermanagh, with the pipeline um, to, to bring gas infrastructure here. Now their, their claims are that that is just bringing natural gas, you know, to the people and giving them another opportunity to have a choice in, in their fuel. But in reality, what you're standing in here in West Fermanagh is um, an area that has a validated application um, by Tamboran and uh, the, the fracking company to, to set up what they call Fermanagh Natural Gas um, which will be trying to extract gas from the shale and sandstone under our feet um, and, and can get that into a network. So, you know, Food and Water Watch Europe are saying that we've got to stop that infrastructure um, going ahead. Um, but, you know, it's like we're having a climate bill um, and we're, <laughs> we're still, um, you know, going down, going down the road of uh, trying to establish an oil and gas industry onshore in Northern Ireland and, and putting all that infrastructure in. So, you know, we really need to sort of stop here and, and get the MLAs to work for us and get them representing us. Um, they've got to make, you know, very serious commitments here. As they sit down in September, and this is very urgent that people realise this, that they sit down in September and they look at the evidence that was submitted. And we've sent them the evidence about the impacts of methane um, on climate change. And we've got to get that climate bill to have a ban on petroleum licensing in it. And that's, that's just absolutely urgent. They need to make a commitment on that. And they also need to make a commitment about what will each party do? What will each member of the executive do whenever they have these validated applications for, for petroleum licensing um, for this area and also up around Loch Ney, um, which is also a lot of the Belfast's drinking water in place? What is each member of the executive, what are they going to vote? They need to put their cards on the table now because we don't actually know when they're actually going to bring those validated license applications in front of the executive. So it's, it's urgent that we actually get those commitments from all of the different parties um, in the assembly now and, and get them to say what they'll actually do. All, all of the parties who are relevant in the, in the executive, you know, um, obviously it was DUP ministers in, in the Department of Economy who are pursuing this research into the economic gains, you know, of establishing an onshore fossil fuel industry in Northern Ireland at the same time, you know, as trying to bring forward some sort of climate bill, which to us is absolutely nonsense, um, but so fundamentally vital. Um, you know, but you know, we've, we've seen across this area posters go up by Sinn Féin saying that they're going to bring a, 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 a fracking ban, but um, we cannot get um, anything from them on what that, when that actually might happen. We know that we feel like it hasn't um, been accelerated in any way. You know, it's, uh, they're asking, they won't tell us the wording. Um, we can't actually, they say the bills office are writing the wording. Um, we can't uh, get that, um, you know, brought forward. We don't believe that it's actually going to happen in any way, shape or form in time, um, you know, for to, to actually be of any effect 
um, in stopping the current license, validated license applications that are in place and that could come before the assembly at any time. So the, the basically the, fa the safest and most important option here is to get um, a petroleum licensing ban into that climate bill. And it's very simple because each party has made a commitment um, when they, well, apart from the DUP, um, has made a commitment when, they, when the motion came before the assembly, they all voted in favour of um, a ban on petroleum licensing. The wording, and we just want that wording put into the climate bill and that will solve a lot of the issues. But uh, currently when we're asking um, the, the different parties, um, SDLP also need to actually take action on that. We are concerned, we have concerns about Nicola Mallon's vote, you know, at, at the executive level. You know, what happens of that because of the possible conflicts of interest that might, that might arise there in regard to, you know, work that her husband is doing. We just don't understand what is the plan there and we need to understand that. And we need um, actual action from all the parties. I mean, Alliance too have published their Green New Deal. Um, we need to, John Blair sitting on that committee. We have uh, Declan McAleer, he's sitting on that committee. Philip McGuigan's on that committee. Um, you know, the Ulster Unionist Party, you know, we need to be really thinking about what happens um, to the farmers that, you know, and the Ulster Farmers Union and all of the people that they're networked with. You know, they need to be thinking about what happens to the farming community if they, establish an onshore oil and gas industry and they give them a big chunk of that carbon budget. You know, what's going to be left for them? Whatever way they decide to, to, to line it up, that's methane production. Um, it's unnecessary. It's, 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 a, it, it's, it's a ridiculous thing to be doing in 2021 to be starting that. But all of this is happening and all of this is progressing quietly. Um, and the, the, the lobbyists are working away and they're closely integrated with a with GSNI, the Geological Service Northern Ireland, who are in the Department of Economy. And we know that several of the people um, in GSNI have moved over um, to be part of Tamboran, the actual company who is applying for the licence um, for hydraulic fracturing here um, under the guise of Fermanagh Natural Gas. And, and actually on their website, they're actually very open in saying that phase two commercial production will involve hydraulic fracturing. But you know, if we get away from those terms and just bring a blanket ban, very simply, um, we need a ban on petroleum licensing in the climate bill um, that's coming before the assembly this September. Uh, that, that will solve a lot of these issues that are very complex. Um, and we need every party now to make a commitment to that. We want to know, you know, come out and tell us, you know, what are you going to do? Um, well, if, when this comes before the in regard to the climate bill, and what are you, what way are you going to vote on this if a license application is presented now before the assembly and they're asked to do that? How are you going to vote, and what are you going to do? You know, we just want to know um, because it, it means everything here. You're, you're standing looking here at. Um, at, at West Fermanagh, um, the mountain that's uh, the big flat top on it over there, I don't know if you're actually able to pick it up. That's got, um, at night you can see the, the, the boardwalk that goes up, that's the, the stairway to heaven, right? And when you're up at that top of that mountain, you look across um, the, one of the world's protected geoparks. This is a, an area now that people are flocking to. Um, to, for their mental health and well-being. It's our, our, we're very rich in our tourism industry here. We've, our agriculture is a very pure product. Um, you know, but, and, and people know it for the beautiful lakes and beautiful mountains and come here to restore themselves for their well-being. Um, that's what Fermanagh is really good at. Um, you know, it's really um, an escape and, and, we're, and we're very good at developing that. And it's, it's actually very underdeveloped here. But, what lies beneath that, the reality here for, for this community, is that 82% of, of this area has below average access to services. So we have a community here that's really suffering more and more increasingly. So you have cancer patients maybe getting appointments to have to go to Derry or Belfast. You know, you've got a lot of different um, health issues where services are moving further and further away and you have something called distance decay where you know really those um, 
those, those reality of those situations are, are playing out with people not being able to access services because they're just too far away. And the cost on the community of always having to travel to try and access services is costing them, you know, we travel over a million more miles than other communities in Northern Ireland. And that's really hurting financially, loss of wages, a lot on a very um, vulnerable community. So it's not, you know, what's that translating into, you know, um, is actually seeing a falling life expectancy for women. And that's been linked to a 60% rise in lung cancer in this area. And that's incredibly serious because when we contact the department um, and the public health agency about that, they say they're, they're looking into it, but they can't tell us why. Is it a high radon area? Do you know, and there's a lot of very serious health issues here that quite often are hidden and you know that we know, know are really impacted because Fermanagh is so remote. So we're continually being the sacrifice zone in health. We're also seeing a continuous cumulative inter, you know, sacrifice zone in terms of access to education. So you're seeing rural schools in rural areas where children are, are being closed because they won't move to integrated, because there isn't the support there for integrated education. And in particular recently, CCMS really particularly abandoning St Mary's and Barola, where those children in Belique are now being forced to get up at six o'clock in the morning, trying to get to a bus by in seven in Belique and traveling hours on the road to be able to access school and in, in education in, in, in Enniskillen by nine o'clock in the morning. And then the whole, same, and the impact on those children. And, um, you know, a large percentage of the remaining children there had special educational needs. And they're literally crying because they often suffer with travel sickness and everything like that. So these are hidden realities that are not just, you know, particular children from one side that are suffering, but suffering from both sides of the community down in the south in Fermanagh as well. You know, but what it means is that you know the deep segregation that we have here is leaving those children really suffering, um, and you know that's a very serious situation for that was a hidden reality. And so we're the sacrifice zone in terms of access to education. We're also the sacrifice zone in terms of access to transport. You know, trying to get anywhere by public transport, even trying to get, we're linked to Derry in terms of services to hospital. You try and get a public transport to go to an appointment to a hospital in Derry, it's virtually impossible. Um, you know, it's, it's, there's not even a rail network doesn't even come near this area. You know, so we're seeing health, we're seeing education, we're seeing transport. And on top of that now, they want to make us the sacrifice zone for the oil and gas industry. So, you know, wake up, you know, really we've got to have a massive change here in terms of our political representation here to actually take seriously the massive inequality and the cumulative burden of suffering that's placed onto this community here. Um, it's so important to realise that Fermanagh is constantly, regularly, consistently becoming the sacrifice zone in all government departments and we absolutely refuse to be this. I mean you're talking about the impacts of climate change, you're seeing the rises in flooding. For goodness sake, where the Fermanagh Lakelands, lots of people in this area are having to get into a boat in the winter time to actually bypass flooded roads. This is what happens in the Lakelands and you want to increase this and yet you want us to accept a climate bill that doesn't put a ban on petroleum licensing, the biggest increaser of methane, the worst offender in climate change.